Just like a broken record, same old songs of accusation play. I courier you to speak the truth. Just look at all your failures and mistakes. And if they really knew you, there's no way they could love you anyway. Oh, oh, oh but I will fight the lies with them. Hello, and welcome to the Send Help Podcast. A podcast and a lifeline for moms who are stuck in the trenches of mommyhood, bringing them encouragement through Jesus, laughter, and sisterhood. Sisterhood. (laughs) We're long distance again, back on the phones. We are. Did you have a happy fourth? We did. We did. Your kids were the cutest, most patriotic children. I was just like, They've worn well, those outfits for three years now. I'm going to have to give in next year and get them a new 4th of July outfit. I showed everyone at my, <laughs> my parents' house. I was like, well, Christy won 4th of July already, and it's not even 6 o'clock. <laughs> no, Dusty and I did watch Hamilton after the kids went to bed. We watched Hamilton. I was very surprised by the whole thing. Really? Yeah, they rap. <laughs> is, do they still call it that? Do the kids still call it rap? <laughs> yes, they still call it rap. <laughs> and I tell you what. <laughs> do they still I had to call have it the that? subtitles on. I had to have the <laughs> subtitles on. I'm not going to lie about it. I did. All of the, like, speaking in in poetry quickly i i couldn't keep up i had to read the subtitles it was masterful okay. honestly it was <laughs> it's incredible it was i thoroughly enjoyed it oh my it. goodness i, I did, did fall asleep during the second act but that's cuz it was we started it at like 10 o'clock last night yeah um <laughs> so it was um, so good though i'll be watching it again obviously yeah you can't keep yeah. me from a good Broadway musical. Sorry. No. <laughs> I'm really hoping that this starts a trend. Mm-hmm. I just, fingers crossed and prayers lifted, that somebody somewhere, when Idina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth were together, yes. that someone said, let's record this to put it out in the future at some point that is unknown to us right now. For weekend. Just in case. Well, they would because that's original what cast. I want to see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the cast that I want to see. I've sure. seen a couple of other casts because yeah. it's my favorite, but that's the one that I want to see. We've seen it live together. Yeah, yes. I have no idea who that cast was. They were amazing, but I don't know who they were. I want to see Kristen Chenoweth and Idina Menzel. <laughs> and yeah. now I've taken us so far off topic. It's fine. We got off on musicals. We did. And if the kids who still call thought? it rap. <laughs> they do though right oh my god is there not another term for it because it was more of like a spoken word poetry thing. poetry slam are you thinking that's where you're I going i don't know <laughs> i don't even know what it's called <laughs> but i did feel the need to snap instead of clap so i don't know and then i just pictured freddie prince jr with a hacky sack because <laughs> And what? she's all that. They have the poetry night. I know. Like the open mic night on poetry night. And he goes up there and he starts <laughs> doing some kind of poetry about his hacky sack. <laughs> I don't know if it's called rap or not. I have no idea. But. It's called rap. I promise. Okay. Okay. I very much enjoyed Hamilton. <laughs> I learned a lot of things, which I didn't think, I don't know why I didn't think that I would. I mean, I, I didn't even really know what it was about. Well, it's not completely so, historically accurate, but. Well, no. I mean, obviously, because we don't look to Broadway for our historical accuracies. Right. <laughs> right. Just like, you know. But it was Hollywood. really good. Yeah. It was really good. So, oh, wow. Almost 10 years ago. Crazy. <laughs> I know. Actually, I think it was 10 years ago. I had to do an intensive for school. So I was in Virginia. I was there for two weeks. So I spent the weekend and the weekend that I spent was 4th of July weekend. So it was very exciting 
to me to be where it all happened. Yeah. Right. Even though I was like two hours away, but that's fine or something. I don't remember. But Thomas Jefferson's summer house Mm -hmm. is very close to Lynchburg. So I went there and toured that. And they were getting ready for a big 4th of July shindig. Um, But while I was there, I found out that at Monticello, Mm -hmm. which was his big estate, on the 4th of July, they were swearing in, they were having like the swearing in naturalization, whatever you call it, ceremony, Mm -hmm. where immigrants who had gone through the whole, I feel weird calling them immigrants, but I also just watched Hamilton. So that's the word that is in my mind. Well, there people who have gone through the process to become a citizen of the United States. Yeah. And they were being sworn in mm-hmm. on the 4th of July at Monticello. Mm-hmm. And it was open to the public. So I went and it was like the most patriotic. I don't know. It was just, it was very nostalgic because. You're, you know, I'm sitting on the lawn of the man who wrote a large portion Mm -hmm. of the Constitution, as well as the Declaration of Independence. Like all of those documents, he helped write. He was the second president. Mm -hmm. Like he did it all. And, and then to watch people become American citizens on his, in his front yard. I love the whole, I love America. I love the 4th of July. It's one of my favorite holidays. And my time hop from the year that I graduated, which was just a couple years after being in Virginia on the 4th of July, um, just my post for, you know, happy 4th of July and, and whatever, whatever that everyone always writes on the 4th of July. That particular 4th of July, mine said something about, You know, it's not just being a free nation, like in this nation, we are, we are free. We can break free from our past. So I don't remember how I worded it, but once you, once when you were eloquent and you didn't have children. Yeah. Right. Yeah. (laughs) That it's not just, you know, the freedom that our country fought for, but this day to me also signifies being free from sin, being free from debt, being free from depression, being free from anxiety, being free from what have you. And, uh, basically I think at the end of it, it was like, what freedom are you celebrating today was what I wrote, but it applies. It just, it applies so well. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that takes us to our theme for today, which is freedom. It does. It is, if you haven't caught on, Freedom. that's dun, where we're going. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> okay. We are going to freedom. We are not talking about freedom in America, though. No, it's a nice segue, though, since it, it was just the 4th of July. It was just kind the 4th of, of July. Was it? Yes, yes, it was. That yes. was just this last weekend. The 4th of July was Saturday. I feel like it was a month ago. It is Monday. Okay. <laughs> And okay. then they will be listening to it on Wednesday. Yes. <laughs> so what the Lord was really putting on um, both of our hearts, because it was so cool, is that Christy was over here in Matthew and I was over here in Numbers. And it's like, ooh, this ties together. Yes, it does. It does. Ta-da. Yeah. It so really does. I have been... Um, I was reading about obviously the old Egyptians and the Israelites, you know, ye old Egyptians. <laughs> ye old Egyptians. That's what I heard in my mind when you said it. I'm glad you went there for me. It's funny because I was thinking about it and then, um, you know, handy dandy Christine Kane's first things first email came through and <laughs> Um, the title was Don't Forget You're Free. And um, I read it and I was like, oh, I'm sending that to Christy. 
we need to we need to explore this further. Let's explore this topic. Let's keep going. Um anyway, so it's it's focusing on numbers 14 3 through 4. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? Our wives and children will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. So this is happening after they have gone and they have seen the promised land. Mm-hmm. They, God has brought them all this way. You know what I love is that I feel like everyone is in our minds. Because didn't last week we say something about, let's not have a wilderness mentality. Yes. I feel like we talk about the Egyptians, the Israelites, a lot. We talk about the Israelites all the time. We do. it Because, like, they won't accept their freedom. Right. Exactly. And now other people are just like, yes, let's all explore this together. I know. They're just feeding, they're just feeding our fire. I know. We keep talking about this because you guys... It is so easy to get in a complacent place Mm -hmm. and get helpless and feel like there's nowhere to go. And God has forgotten me. Right. I'm a loser. I will always be a loser. And that is not true (laughs) because the enemy keeps lying to us, keeps lying to us as women, as moms. It does not matter as people, period. He wants to keep you distracted because he wants to keep you in bondage. And if he can distract you enough and get you to believe the lies that he's telling you, Mm -hmm. you don't get to go anywhere because Mm -hmm. you psych yourself out of taking the next step. Even though God is like, I'm right here. Look at me. I'm right here. Anyway, (laughs) I'm just going to go ahead and read this. More than once, the children of Israel forgot how bad life had been when they were in bondage, enslaved in Egypt, and they wanted to turn back. The same can be true for us. We forget how hard living as a captive is, and we're tempted to yearn for what was familiar and go back to our old ways. You guys, especially right now, especially right now, it is so easy to think, if I could just go back to the way things were. I just want mm-hmm. to go back to that place where I would felt comfortable. Whether and and I'm going to just gonna, Isn't that what everyone is saying right now? Yes. We've absolutely. All, we're all still in a type of quarantine. I think all of us are just ready for things to go back to normal. God, yes, but But we keep saying I want to go to a new normal. I don't want to go back to the things way, the, the way they were. But when push comes to shove, that's what we're yearning for is mm-hmm. the is well, the former the things. Thing. Yeah. They're the former th- you you guys. Oh my gosh. Like God is in this. I know that it seems dark. I know it seems like things are getting worse. And yeah, it sucks that America, especially Texas is back in the high numbers of COVID. But y'all, we have made it this far. <sighs> He's got a promise. He has brought us to this point. There are distractions all around us. And the enemy wants us to stay distracted. He wants us looking at flesh and blood. He wants us not looking at the spirit. He wants us being distracted by over here, we've got civil rights. Over here, we've got fear. Over here, we've got COVID-19. Over here, we're having to wear masks. Over here, like, it's just like there are all of these things that are vying for attention. But again, mm-hmm. it's the enemy, and he's so blatantly coming at us. It is so blatant. It's like, dude, you showed all your cards at once, but nobody is seeing him. They're only seeing the distractions. Right. And the thing is, right now, specifically, if you are looking for negativity and for the things that are bad and all the bad things, and oh, it's just going to get worse, it's just getting worse, it's just getting worse, I'm looking for negative, you're going to find negative. Just like how you can find you can find a news source to back up any theory out there right now. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> You can find a scripture to back up anything that you want to say. Yes, also. absolutely. But if you are looking for but negative. it's taken out of context. Yeah. But that's not the same with the news. That's just scripture. Right. Uh, <laughs> 
But if you are looking for negative, you're going to find negative. And God is telling us that we need to be looking for the blessing. He is blessing. He is ready to bless. He is bringing us to a promise. He has a promise that he has given you. And he has not stopped on that promise. He's going to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. But you have to be looking for those blessings to see them. Because if you look for them, you will find them. Just like if you look for the negative, you're going to find the negative. It is so easy to go back to the way things that helped, whether it's addiction. I don't know who I'm talking to here. If it's addiction, if you, if it's easier to grab that bottle of wine than it is to call somebody that's accountable, that, that holds you accountable or lean back into the Lord and keep walking on the path that you've set before you, like that he, mm-hmm. that you've said, I'm doing this, the commitment you've made. It's easier. It would be the easy thing to go back to the thing that was comfortable before. Mm-hmm. Don't put the new wine into the old wine skin. No, he's doing a new thing. You guys, he is, he has promised us that he is doing a new thing. God wins in the end. You guys remember that. God wins in the end. And we have been set free. We are free. We are free. You have been set free of that bondage. Don't take it back on. Don't take it back on. Don't go back into bondage. It is so easy to go back. But he wants us to keep going forward. No matter how bad our past it's always easier to default to our old behaviors than keep forging new ones but there is no drive through breakthrough I love that line we all must go through the wilderness to get to freedom to defeat the giant who fueled our shame and captivity that's thank you thank you Chris Kane that was beautifully put (laughs) you have been freed of sin you don't have to put the shackles back on but that's what the enemy wants you to do. And he wants you to believe that you, there's no point in going forward because it's just going to get worse. Mm-hmm. And here's the deal, guys. The Israelites had to take a really long, long walk through the wilderness. And there were a lot of major things that happened. But God was always there. He was always supplying their needs. He was always leading them forward. And every time they came to something that was a hindrance that was in their way, he showed them a way to get through. He parted the sea. But if they hadn't taken the step forward, just like when we talked about moving forward, they wouldn't have gone through the sea. (laughs) You know, like you have to keep moving forward and you have, you cannot go backwards. Do not look in the past. It's that whole so that's why the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror, because you're not supposed to remember the things in the past. You're supposed to look forward. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay. Heard an awesome analogy this weekend during one of the three church services I watched. It was Pastor Jeremy Foster speaking at Elevation Church. He was talking about how there's actual science. This is really cool. Of how a threshold, you're not sp- you're not meant to step on the fre- threshold of a door, right? Mm-hmm. So you step over and into and through the door, and then you're on the other side of the door, right? So when you are going into your house, your brain is collecting information about your surroundings as you're outside. And the minute that you step over into the threshold inside, it immediately just erases the trash can on the computer Like it throws away all those files so that it can keep storing new ones, right? So it it erases the information that it just compiled while you were on the outside of the door. And then you step in and there's like actual science about it. And I thought that was so cool because it's like our brains already do that. Like when we enter a room from the other one, that's why when you get into a room, you're like, I have no, what did I come in here for? (laughs) (laughs) It's because your brain automatically does that because it's collecting information that you're not even thinking about. And then it's like, oh, we don't need that information anymore. We're in a new place. 
And that's what I we're supposed to do. I don't know why I came in here because right now I know that I need to pick this up off the floor before I trip over it. Yes, because the Lord invented post-it notes and that is why. <laughs> but <laughs> that is so, I think it's so cool that there's a science behind that, that, the, that our brains were built that way. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to forget the former things. We're supposed to look, afo- look forward. Right. Forgetting what is behind. Yes. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's what we're supposed to think about. We're supposed to forget about the former things of the past. Put them in the rearview mirror. Mm-hmm. They're gone. Don't allow yourself to go backwards. Don't listen to the enemy. It's not over until you hit the promised land. Right. Don't go backwards. Pharaoh was not good to you. Right. You know, like, don't go back to living as a, in, in slavery. Slavery to sin. Slavery to an addiction. Slavery to bad relationship. That one, that one hits home for somebody. Slavery from a bad relationship. Don't go back to that person that didn't treat you the way that God wanted you to be treated. Just because you know it and it's comfortable. Yeah. You know it was horrible. Just because that is, that's a lesser of two evils that you know because the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Like, that's not what God, God, that's Satan wants you to believe that there's a devil in front of you too. That you're going towards. God right. has something. God has your future. God has a plan for you. God has mm-hmm. your promise. And it's ahead of you, not behind you. He didn't bring you this far for you to turn around and go back. That's right. not his plan. Anyway, that's my thing. But you had something beautiful. I did, which, I mean, I know that when I wrote it out for you this afternoon, mm-hmm. it was a little different than what I'm probably about to say. That's okay. Okay. <clears throat> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Read my shirt. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Everything's fine. So <laughs> I've been reading in Matthew. <clears throat> um, I'm actually like 10 chapters behind my group. I join the chat every week, but in my reading and the study guide, I'm actually like 10 chapters behind. Well, that's because you needed to be in the chapter you're in in order it's to get true. what you needed today. It's true. Because um, you were talking about the Israelites and they, they want to go back mm-hmm. because they felt like, okay, well, at least we you know, we know how we're going to die if we go back to Egypt. But if we stay out here, who knows what's going to happen to us. But you're talking about going, going back, stop looking behind. But even... Even when it's our current, Mm -hmm. even when it's our current that we're like, no, what I'm in the middle of is not okay. Right. I was in Matthew chapter nine today and, uh, this isn't even the one that I sent you. So anyway, (laughs) (laughs) thanks thanks for letting me study that one. I know. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Okay. But so in Matthew chapter nine, Jesus healed uh, the blind man and the mute man, mm-hmm. the blind, the blind and the mute, right? Yep. And um, he asked them, "Do you believe that I am able to do this?" They replied, "Yes, Lord." So he touched their eyes, and according to your faith, it will be done to you. Their sight was restored. Jesus is walking through the streets and remember the woman that touches his robe. My favorite girl in the Bible. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And if I just, if I can just touch him, I will be healed. So that happens, right? Mm -hmm. But then like immediately from that happening, uh, the servants come. No, the man comes. Where is it? Why can I not find it? As he was telling the woman, I found it. Oh, my goodness. As he's telling the woman to, like, go and, you know, not be gone with you, but go and be of good health. And Jesus loves you because I'm saying it and I'm Jesus. (laughs) A ruler kneels before him and says, my daughter has just died, but come and put your hand on her and she will live. So Jesus goes with him. But he was 
he was delayed a little bit. Like he paid attention to this woman as the rulers coming to him. He paid attention to this woman for a little bit. And I'm sure that the guy is like, well, if you hadn't have been talking to her, then you could have come a little quicker and maybe she wouldn't be dead. That's what I would be thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't know about anybody else, but I would be thinking about me, myself, and I, and the person that I'm going to Jesus for and thinking, can you please stop talking to that woman? Because I need your attention over here. I need you to come with me. And maybe if you hadn't have been talking to her for just two seconds too long, then my little girl wouldn't have died. And the question in my study guide is what do you think was the reason for Jesus's delay? Which, I mean, it's not a delay. I mean, he didn't like, hey, I'm going to take a break. I've been walking all day, dude. I know that you're telling me that your daughter is dead, but I'm going to sit here for a few minutes and catch my breath before I come with you. It's not like he took a huge delay. No. But what I wrote down for my answer, what came to my mind was, do we still believe, no matter what the circumstance is, Mm Mm-hmm. Do we still believe? Did this man still believe that if I go and get Jesus, even though she's just died, can he still heal her? And everyone in the house was like, you know, already starting the mourning process, Mm -hmm. I guess, of what you do when someone dies. I feel like I'm so backwards in my notes. But you're not. You're in really good track. (laughs) Okay. Go, Christy, go. What? (laughs) But then the next, the next, it goes on and it goes to, you know, the people that I read about before when I was thought I was reading about the the daughter. The blind guy. The blind guy. He heals the the blind guys (laughs) and he heals the mute guy. (laughs) And both of them. If you keep reading, they're both in there. (laughs) And that is Matthew 9, 27 through 34. 27 to 34 Mm -hmm. is when he heals the blind men. He asks them, do you believe that I can do it? Yes. Right? The question that was in my study guide, because these men were blind. Yeah. So the question that was presented was, how can we have spiritual blindness? And I've like, I'm reading the entire chapter. So I'm not just taking this particular passage in this particular question, like I'm taking it in context with the whole entire chapter. So I've read about, you know, the woman touching the cloak and oh my goodness, like the, I wish that I had that faith. The kind of faith that I she wish that had. I had her faith. We're going to have to do she a She just whole, wanted to touch yeah. his robe. Whole episode right? on to her. Touch his robe. Whole episode I'm the one on her. That is going to be like, <laughs> um, hey, Jesus, I need you to come with me. And then once we get to the place, I need you to do a thing. Yeah. Not just, you could do it from here if you wanted to. Can yeah. I, can we like, can our fingertips touch? And then, and that's, um, let me just step in your footprint that you just left behind and that'll be enough. Like, right. I just, right? Right. So can we have spiritual blindness? Oh my goodness. Yes, we can. Absolutely. We can be so stuck in the past or even in the current Mm -hmm. that we are unable, incapable of seeing what can be. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Keep going because that'll that'll bring it to my last thing that I had written down. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) It's perfect. It's perfect. And the next question, and I don't, uh, she's... She's in my mind sometimes. You know who you are. Jesus came to heal us spiritually. Mm -hmm. Like everyone thought that he was going to come and take over as being the king and restore the Jews. They had a lot of ideas of what he was going to do. Right? Yeah. We have a lot of ideas. Oh, we do. For sure. Of what he should be doing. Yes. Yes. But in reality, he came to heal us spiritually. The question was, why did Jesus perform miracles? To build our faith. To build our faith, to show us that he is a God that heals and restores. Yes. Would we believe that he can heal us and restore us if we hadn't seen him heal a sick person? No. Would we believe that... I can leave that past behind me because God has restored 
restored me if we didn't know, if we hadn't read, if we don't have the Bible in front of us to read about all of the miracles that he performed when he walked on the earth. If we didn't read the miracle of him dying for our sins and rising from the grave, if we didn't believe those miracles, Mm -hmm. how are we going to believe that he will heal and restore us and that he has something better ahead for us to strive for? Yeah. So those Israelites, I am an Israelite. Who am I kidding? (laughs) But I want to be the woman. I want to be uh, the woman who I has know. so much faith that I'm not I'm not blind at all because I can see what is past me reaching out and touching the hem of his garment. She could see. Mm-hmm. If I can just touch the hem of his robe, I know that this will be my future. Yeah. He will heal me and restore me. I want to be that. I don't want to be the Israelites. Taking the manna and trying to hold on to it. (laughs) Complaining about the manna, saying, hey, why couldn't you put some more cinnamon in this? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The the manna that I thought that God... Can you tone down that pillar of fire, God? I'm trying to sleep. (laughs) I just... mm. I know. I know. We're so complainy. <laughs> we are. We're so complainy. But I don't want to be spiritually blind. I don't want to be so caught up in my past and what I've lived through or so caught up in what my current situation is. And how or it what seems I helpless. Think yeah. My current situation is. Exactly. Because I know that what I think my current situation is, if we actually sat down and had a talk and you listened to what I think my current life situation is, you'd mm-hmm. be like, What? Yeah. Because it's just not accurate. Yeah. It's your perspective. It's my perspective. My perspective of being the stay-at-home mom to three littles who I'm also going to have a breakdown probably at some point. One of the next episodes is just going to be me crying hysterically because my baby goes to kindergarten in August. Okay, don't speak that out because, I mean, odds are they're not going back to school in August. (laughs) But... (laughs) If I take my perspective of where I think I am, then why, why would I ever believe what can be? Yeah. He's told me what can be. But then I look at my current situation and think, (laughs) you don't see what I see, God. I don't see it. It's not happening. You got to change a lot of things for that to happen. And he's just like, and watch me. (laughs) Watch me. Okay. 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 I don't even know that song. Okay. Okay. So what the Lord was speaking to me earlier today, I'm going to get all the Lord was speaking to me on you guys. Sorry. Not sorry. Well, that's the whole point of reading the Bible is for him to speak to you. <laughs> yes. Okay. What else are we going to talk about if we're not talking about what the Lord's saying to us? All right. So, Come home. Okay. So. Tell it like it is, girl. Amos 913. The, basically, the gist is to look for what he, God is doing because he's doing something. Something's mm, coming. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. let me read it to you. It's a little yes. convoluted, but. um. <laughs> And then I'm going to read the footnotes and that'll that'll clear it up. <laughs> the days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman mm-hmm. and the planter by the one treading grapes. New wine will drip from the mountains and flow down all flow from flow from all the hills. Okay. So, what it says in my footnotes. This verse describes a time such as abundance of crops and the people won't be able to to harvest them all, right? So the Lord was speaking that to me today. And 
Um, so then you were talking about perspective and I'm like, oh, it's so good. Okay. So because I was talking about how we need to fix our eyes on what God is doing. It's not actually getting worse. You're coming out. So he's speaking that mm-hmm. you are coming out. It looks like it's getting worse. And you're like, it's always darkest before the dawn, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. It literally is. But then the Lord was like, come up higher. Come up higher. Change your perspective and see it from the Lord's perspective. Get up on that rampart. Right? Come up higher. He's always talking about getting up on a high place and going to the mountain mm-hmm. and like all of these things. It's all, I feel like it's really, he's just speaking. The reason that Moses had to go Look into Look at a, the whole picture. Yeah. Moses had to go up into the mountains in order to get the Ten Commandments and to talk well, to God. mountains are where God lives. Well, yes, especially back then. But I really believe that it's also, a, there's something, another part of that is that he had to change perspective. He had to get to a higher place. He had to literally go higher in order to get God's perspective on things, mm-hmm. in order to be face to face with God. Yes. You guys, we he is calling you to come up higher. And if you don't know how to do that, ask the Lord. He will bring you to it. He's not like, hey, I put this mountain in front of you and I want you to climb to the top, but I'm not going to help. You have to figure it out. If he brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Yes. But he's saying, come up higher, change your perspective and see it from the Lord's perspective. He wants to show it to you. Mm -hmm. He wants to pick you up, daughter, and put you on his shoulders so that you can see the world from what he sees. He wants to put your head even higher up there so that you can look down and see things from a different perspective. He wants you to step back from that Monet. And see the full picture. He wants to show it to you. Honestly, I could go on with metaphor after metaphor after metaphor because that's the way the Lord speaks to me and that's how I speak. But seriously, you guys, we did not rehearse this. We did not talk about this. Christy went to it. We did perspective. And then God's like, oh, look, I put it together. It's all there. It's all there. (laughs) I'm so excited. Because it's serious, you guys. Come up higher, daughter. Come up higher. Let me lift you and put you on my shoulders. Let me show you what I see. Let me show you. Let me remind you of the promise that I've given you and the where I'm taking you. You just need a minute on daddy's shoulders. Oh, so good. You know. I'm out of breath. It's so good. I did not like. (laughs) I was not. The child that was like, Daddy, put me on your shoulders. Um, I didn't like it (laughs) at all. (laughs) At all. It terrified me. Um, I'm afraid of heights. And apparently it doesn't have to be very high. (laughs) No, your dad's pretty short. (laughs) (laughs) But when you trust... When you trust him completely, you get outside of your fear, you get outside of your fear. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher. Therefore, whatever we are seeing, whatever we are thinking, he's looking at us thinking, aim higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Come on, let me show you. He's saying, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Well, that is it. We love you. Thank you for listening. Go follow us on all of the social medias at Send Help Podcast. Go to our website, thesendhelppodcast.com, and um, join our newsletter. And we will see you next week. Yes. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.